Thank you guys for clicking on the video. I am Sully and today fellows we have series where I'm going to try and start up and keep this going where I break down all the teams. So a recap last season, a break down the off season moves and then we look to next year. And with that being said, we're going to talk about the Anaheim Mighty Ducks. Now I don't follow all the teams so I hope you guys will allow me some uh, grace in the things I say. Please understand that I try and do some research before I talk about a team. But I may not know everything, so I'm going to leave it to the fans in the comments to sort of flush out this preview and breakdown. So I hope you guys are ready, and it's going to start with the Anaheim Mighty Ducks. The Anaheim Mighty Ducks last year came from a 0-2 deficit against the eventual Stanley Cup champion Los Angeles Kings. And they came back, took a 3-2 lead in the series, could not close out Game 6 or 7. Specifically, Game 7, they lost 6-2. And with that, Boudreaux sort of officially has this reputation of Game 7's at, him, at home not being able to deliver. I think he's probably one of the most successful regular season head coaches uh, today in the game. But when it comes to the playoffs, he has sort of struggled not only to win series, but also to have his teams compete well in Game 7's. We're going to look back at uh, Washington specifically. I know all too well Game 7 blunders and the team not showing up. Uh, for those type of games and so Boudreaux going into uh, this upcoming season with the Anaheim My Ducks certainly is starting to formulate that reputation that he can't finish or he can't get his teams to play well in game seven so that would be something Boudreaux and the boys would look to improve on but one of the great things that Anaheim did as a team was they had a strong they had the leading even strength point getter in the NHL with Ryan Getzlaff. That is a person that they utilize very well. He averaged per uh, 60 minutes three points uh, out of the 60 and so he was a building block and with that top line Corey Perry they did well for themselves certainly. But some misleading stats about the uh, Anaheim Mighty Ducks I found personally is during the regular season when they had the lead they were great and we're going to take a look at the stats right now leading after two they had one of the best they were second behind florida in holding on to that lead 930 was the percentage so out of the if they were leading after two periods they were borderline a lot to win that game and after the first period they sort of uh they were seventh at eight at 813 and throughout the regular season the power play was definitely a weakness for them for the anaheim mighty ducks they, they struggled. They were 22nd in the power play for in the NHL throughout the regular season. And in the PK, they were about, looking at it, just about uh, 13th. And they were middle of the road. They also struggled a uh, five on five. They were one of, they weren't in the top 10, nor were they, I think they were middle of the road at 50 in Fenwick uh, four. But the interesting note about the Ducks is that actually their course was 48. And so if you take, if you look at the Corsi and not the uh, the Fenwick, it's very, it can be misleading because right now the Ducks last year were 15, dead even in Fenwick 4, but their Corsi was 48. And if you look at the Corsi 4, that's going to put them at 15th with 49.8. So it seemed like Anaheim, once they got the lead, they were able to hold on to the lead. And that is evident by their great stats after leading after one, leading after two. They were also the best team in the regular season to come from behind after trailing. So those two stats, I think, contributed to their success. But in the offseason, they made huge gains by adding Ryan Kessler. The only concern that I was looking at their roster, uh, they have three players that are over 30. They have four. One, one uh, gentleman just turned uh, 30. He's 30 on the dot, but... Three guys over 30. Now, I don't know if they're... I know they're players, but I don't know what their status is with the team. And so Duck fans are going to sort of have to fill me in on how important they are. But it seems like their defense needs to develop and get get a little bit younger with those three guys who are over their 30s. But they do have Cam Fowler. I know he's been playing. Last year he had six goals and 30 assists, and he's a building block, I think. I don't know, but I'm just guessing. For their defensive core of the future, but with Ryan Kessler, the they were they gave up some D, some D men, but again, bringing him in is going to add depth to that line. And I would look for their power play and their even strength 
uh, numbers to improve upon last year. I don't think they're going to be a middle of the road uh, puck possession team. They should be breaking that upper, not hovering below 15th, but I think they should make a trend upward, especially in the power play where they struggled throughout the regular season. The interesting thing though with the Ducks is when the playoffs struck, they were fifth in power play and penalty kill. But again, if you add Ryan Kessler to that, it improves them so much down the center too. LA is a great example of that. They are strong one through four in the center position. And so look for Anaheim to really develop, uh, improve on their puck possession and power play going into next year. One of the things that Anaheim did a great job of, I think, was signing Danny Healy. Danny Healy catches a lot of flack, but at the end of the day, you're paying a, a potential goal scorer $1 million, who used to have an incredible season. And he had one great season, 50-07, uh, uh, and 07, but you come back and you look at fast forward, he hasn't been producing like he was, and now they sign him for $1 million for one year. And if you think about it, he's just going to add that much more potential offense to the um, um, to the Ducks. And he'll add an offensive threat if he plays third or fourth line. I don't think they're going to play him second line. Uh, but even if they play him in the third line, you have scoring depth and he's extremely cheap. So if he doesn't produce, it's only $1 million for one year. So it's a great signing, which is why a lot uh, USA Today, there was an article, gave the Ducks a grade of A for the offseason. Uh, uh, Ryan Kessler to be the number one, the number two team center, and they also signed Danny Heatley. So things are looking good in Anaheim. My, my issue... Uh, they have Kessler bringing in the number two center. They're going to be better in the power play, puck possession, especially in the regular season. Look for those numbers to trend upward, not downward, because they were middle of the pack. But Bruce Boudreaux, for me, is the biggest question mark. And you lost Solani, he retired, and he was a great player. But Boudreaux, you have to, he has to make the next step in his evolution as a coach. Uh, it's becoming... It's now a trend. Maybe people thought it was just Washington. I know uh, when he went to Anaheim and he, he was having success, people could put the blame on Ovechkin because that's what people love to do in the Capitals. They just have not a good roster. But now he sort of developed that reputation, blowing that Game 7 in Anaheim. People are starting to say, well, wait a minute. What? Maybe it's Boudreaux. Now, maybe that's different in the Anaheim local media. But if you take a step back and look at a national perspective, Boudreaux has developed that reputation. So I know they have a great goaltender in the future. Real quickly, let me just look at that. Uh, Anderson and Gibson, I know they believe in uh, those two goalies. And so things are looking promising in Anaheim with the goaltending. They're bringing in uh, Danny Heatley. They have uh, Ryan Kessler, excuse me. And they also have Paul Mary, Corey Perry. Uh, they have good depth. But again, they need to take that next step, specifically Boudreaux. What is Boudreaux going to do to take that next step in his evolution? So we'll see how it goes. I hope you Anaheim Duck fans are excited. It was just announced, I think, January 11th. It was uh, Team Timu Forever or, or something like that where they pay tribute to Solani. should be a great night. Hope you guys in Anaheim are looking forward to that. Let me know what you guys think about the Ducks. Were they a great team? Uh, what do you guys think? Did they blow it? Does Boost Boudreaux now have that reputation as a coach who can't finish? And also let me know if I can improve this. I'm starting this out. Ducks are the first episode, so may hit some bumps in the road. But let me know how you guys thought of my first episode of Team Breakdown for the Anaheim My Ducks. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I am Sully. Take care, and I'll see you later.